Hi friends, welcome to biologyexamsforyou.com. Today we are going to discuss about cDNA library. What is cDNA and how is cDNA synthesized? And why we need a cDNA library? And the steps in the construction of cDNA library? And we'll be discussing these topics within 5 minutes. Starting with the basic question. From where we get our gene of interest for gene cloning? We have already discussed this question in our video on steps in recombinant DNA technology and the primary source is the genomic library. And we have given a video on genomic library also. And the second source is the cDNA library. cDNA library represents a collection of clones containing cDNA of an individual organism under study. So this is a petri plate and all these are colonies containing a cDNA of an individual organism. What is cDNA and how is cDNA synthesized? As we all know, eukaryotic gene consists of coding regions and non-coding regions. Coding regions are called as exons and non-coding regions are called as introns. During transcription, both coding and non-coding regions are transcribed and forming a pre-mRNA with both exon and intron. Exons are the expressing sequences that is translated to protein. In eukaryotic system, there is a mechanism called RNA processing where exons are joined and introns are removed. Now we have mature mRNA and that is translated to protein in the case of an eukaryotic system. The point is cDNA is synthesized from mature mRNA where exons are only present. This is a summary of cDNA synthesis. We have the mRNA. mRNA is having a speciality. It is having a poly A tail at the 3 dash region and a 5 dash cap also. And so we can easily design a primer as there is a poly A tail. Poly T primer can be used. And using reverse transcriptase enzyme, the enzyme that is capable of synthesizing DNA from an RNA template, we can synthesize a DNA strand. And this is what is happening. This red strand is the mRNA strand. So using this enzyme, we are synthesizing a DNA strand. Now we have the first DNA strand, which is called as a cDNA or complementary DNA, a strand that is complementary to mRNA. Now enzymes like ribonuclease H is used to cleave the RNA. And DNA polymerizes like clinofragment is used to synthesize the second strand. We have given a video on clinofragment also. This cDNA can be used for the construction of cDNA library. Now the next question is, we have genomic library and what is the advantage of having cDNA library over genomic library? So let us see the situation. This is a genomic library of eukaryote. A, B, C, D, E all refers to the gene. This colonies, this bacterial colonies contain specific gene or specific fragment of DNA that is maintained which is called as a genomic library. In the case of genomic library, the DNA that is inserted in the colonies will be having both exons and introns. Generally, while expression, we are using E. coli, the bacterium which is the most common prokaryotic host. For expression, we are using E. coli widely. So if you are using a genomic library, genomic library, the gene will be having both introns and exons. But the prokaryotic host or bacterium doesn't have a mechanism to splice out this intron and to join this exon. So there is a difficulty in expressing this particular gene. So there won't be any gene expression as E. coli doesn't have a mechanism to splice out this intron and join these exons. So this is a problem while expressing a eukaryotic gene in, a, in prokaryotic hosts like bacterium. There comes the importance of cDNA library. In cDNA library, we have only exons of this particular gene. When exons are introduced into bacterium, as bacterial genes doesn't have intron, bacteria recognizes it easily and there is no need of pre-mRNA processing and it will be converted, it will be transcribed and it will be translated to protein very easily. And this is the advantage of cDNA library, our genomic library, for expression of an eukaryotic gene in a prokaryotic system like bacterium, cDNA library is having a fair advantage. Now moving into the steps in the construction of a cDNA library. For the construction of cDNA library, the first step is 
mRNA isolation from the cell and cDNA synthesis using reverse transcriptase enzyme. So suppose this is an eukaryotic cell. So we have isolated mRNA and cDNA is synthesized and is joined with T4 ligase. We have five genes A, B, C, D, E. 5-phosphate is removed using alkaline phosphatase and there are many processing mechanisms in between. This prevents re-annealing. Step 3 incorporation of this fragment into a suitable vector and we are introducing this fragment into plasmid or phage A, P, C, D, E. So now we have vector with a cDNA fragment. Then step 4 introducing this recombinant plasmid into a suitable host like bacterium where it will multiply, we can screen, we can. We need to select it, we need to characterize the clones. Now we have bacterium with this particular cDNA, A, B, C, D, E. So we have the recombinant E. coli or recombinant bacterium with this specific cDNA. And this will multiply inside the host. And now we have a cDNA library with the five genes A, B, C, D, E, the cDNA of A, B, C, D, E, genes of yeast and this is referred as cDNA library where each of this colony will be having a particular cDNA of this organism and maintenance of this set of clones is referred as cDNA library as we mentioned the advantage of cDNA library is during the expression of a eukaryotic gene in the prokaryotic system as cDNA is devoid of intron it's very easy to express a eukaryotic gene in a prokaryotic system like bacterium. And this is a summary of steps in the construction of CDNA library. You are with biologyexamsforate.com. Thank you so much for your support.